Thank you, Larry. Well, good morning. morning. I wanted to say thank you for the warm welcome. It was uh, really lovely to come back to this beautiful sanctuary and see lots of familiar faces and to be astounded by a couple of things already this morning. You've got this wonderful sound and video equipment. You've got a phenomenal choir, a tremendous musician, and holy cow, a whole row of children up front for worship. So keep up what you're doing because, wow, what a vibrant, lively church you've got. And thank you for, Pastor Alex, for letting me invite myself to be here with you today. <laughs> We've been meaning to do this for a while. I, um, I also wanted to thank you for your gifts to OCWM. And I know I make this, this is my one OCWM joke is that it stands for Our Church Wants Money. It's actually our church's wider mission. And the, the gifts that you give to that support places like Pilgrim Park and meetings like our association meeting yesterday makes it possible for me to visit our churches and to be as supportive as we can for our, our pastors. So I was, um, I was glad to ask Alex if I could come and to ask him if he'd kind of like a Sunday off. I understand you had a funeral on Tuesday and we're still kind of recovering physically from all the activity of Holy Week and Easter. So, and you have another funeral Wednesday. Oh, you had one. Oh my. Um, so I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. I do want to thank the choir. You've got, <laughs> you've got some resources here that as I travel through our association, which is from Rockton up by the Wisconsin border, then along Route 80 here, out to Savannah on the Mississippi, and then DeKalb at the easternmost point. There are not very many churches with young children. There are not very many churches with lively choirs, and there are, there are not many churches that have the vibrancy you do. So that's not to say to rest on your laurels, but to know that you're healthy, your vibrancy is apparent, and you are being led by a tremendous pastor. So, so, um, and I'm not saying that just to butter you up, Alex. <laughs> Alex has um, a reputation in our association among his colleagues as being like just plain steady and rock solid, and maybe he tears his hair out in the parking lot once in a while in private, but he's he is faithful and compassionate and totally supportive of his colleagues and this congregation. So we're very, very lucky to have him. So this is the fourth Sunday after Easter, and this is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. So Psalm 23, that beloved psalm that we mostly know by heart, but we still check to make sure we get, get it right. And then the gospel reading from John about the, the good shepherd, that the sheep know the good shepherd's voice. I believe that Jesus is teaching us that there's a difference between renting and owning. That God owns us, God's not renting us. A friend tells the story of going fishing with his buddy they're out in his buddy's boat, having a great day. Not so much luck, but they were having a really good time together. And as, as evening was drawing close, they pulled the boat up to the shore and they started unloading the stuff to take back to the truck. And when they went back for the second load, the boat hadn't quite been pulled up on the shore far enough and it had started to drift out onto the river just an inch or two at a time, but that distance between the shore and the boat was getting bigger, 
and it was early spring and the river was cold and it wasn't going to be too long before that river the river's current pulled the boat downstream so my friend tells me that her husband the renter <laughs> the non-boat owner non-owner i should say he stood there the owner his buddy stripped off his his jumpsuit jumped in now my friend's husband cheered him on but didn't get his feet wet <laughs> Jesus is teaching us in this passage from John that God gets his feet wet. God goes to great lengths to know us and doesn't just let us flounder, doesn't let us drift out to the middle of the river and be caught by the current. I have grown up apparently believing something that's not true, that sheep are kind of dumb the person who wrote this little article about sheep not being as dumb as we believe said that that's a rumor that was started by cattle farmers, that it's really cows, steers, that aren't so smart. Apparently the difference, or a difference, between cattle and sheep is that cattle are nudged, led from behind. So... You'll see in the movies, even in TV shows, that the cattle are being rustled by, or, or urged along from behind by the cowboy, cowgirl, by the, the guy on the horse. The difference is that sheep are led from the front. Apparently, if a sheepdog tries to corral sheep from behind, the sheep don't pay attention. The shepherd goes forward and the sheep follow. And this article makes it clear that the difference here is that the sheep want to know that it's okay to go forward. They want someone to go ahead of them and ensure that it's safe. And so being nudged from behind means you're kind of going into uncharted territory, perhaps. But being led from the front means you're following someone trustworthy, someone loving, and someone who's working hard to ensure that you're not hurt. At the end of a day, apparently, when there's lots of, uh, lots of sheep in a pasture, maybe parts of different fields or out in the open, the sheep tend to come together for one last sip of water before they're put down for the night. And this is where the sheep's voice would, this is where the shepherd's voice would make sense to the people who are listening to John as he's teaching this. The sheep will come for their water, and then they will know the voice of the shepherd who's going to lead them to their place where they're going to be bedded down for the night. They know that voice. So you can have as many as a dozen different different herds of sheep all together, and when they hear the shepherd's voice, they'll go with them. What makes this so important for us as Christians is that I believe that God gives us the ability to hear God's voice, to hear that little murmur in our heads, or to be woken up by a dream, or to be driving down the road and have a sudden realization that there's something that you need to be doing, someone you need to be caring for. How many of you have had a dream or a daydream where an old familiar name keeps coming up in your mind, in your heart, and you finally go, I better call him, and you call and you find out something's been going on. You find out that there was a reason you were calling and it's not just that it's been six months since you've last talked. That, that is the voice of the shepherd. That's the voice that we know. That's the voice that compels us to do the things that we might not do otherwise. That's a voice of reminder. It's a voice of love. And it's a voice that's going ahead of us, that we can trust, that we can know we're, no, we're going into good pastures, being led safely. 
My sister, I think, has a very special connection to the Holy Spirit. She hears that voice and responds. She said she used to mm, put it off, put it off, maybe jot on the back of an envelope or a napkin. I need to call Josephine. I need to check in with my sister-in-law. She says now she tries to do it the same day. And the more that she does it the same day and makes that call or checks on the neighbor or gets on her knees and prays, the more she feels that God's spirit is letting her know what to do next, where to be, where to focus her love and attention. And I've been the recipient of that in the middle of the day, Susan calling me and saying, hey, just thinking of you, you okay? And I, 99% of the time will say, wow, Sue, your timing is incredible. I just learned that so-and-so has been in a car accident. Or, Susan, wow, I'm really worried about mom and dad. It's amazing. You know that voice. You know that voice. And you know that God won't lead you into dark places without being there with you himself. You know because God has taught you that. You know because you are the sheep of the Savior's flock. You know because your hearts are open. And you know because your minds, your hearts, your souls are so full of the love of God that you want to express that. May you listen carefully for the Good Shepherd's voice and may you be blessed as you minister to the sheep of your own flocks, as you are led by the one who calls us into new life, and as the risen Savior leads and guides us. Amen.